Well, good afternoon. My name is Mark Belaish. I'm president of torontojobs.ca and torontojobs.ca. Very happy to uh, be hosting our keynote speaker live uh, this afternoon. It's now 2.35. Uh, Eastern good afternoon. Time. I'm president of torontojobs.ca and Toronto All right. Entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. Um, you might be hosting your open, uh, John, perhaps. Uh, uh, it's now 2.35. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, pause the recording and I'll be... Sounds like we're, we're okay. Good. We're okay now. All right, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Some technical uh, issues there. So thanks very much, uh, John. So uh, again, my name is Mark Belaish. I'm president of torontojobs.ca and torontoentrepreneurs.ca. Uh, very uh, uh, proud to be joined by John Letary, uh, who is CEO at Hero Certified Burgers. Uh, you have some a great story, John. So uh, so let's really get uh, right into it. Um, so right now, uh, you currently have 45 Hero Certified Burger franchised units. You have two Letary Espresso bars and seven virtual kitchens. Um, so let's let's kind of go back uh, to a little bit earlier. And, and for those watching, you're certainly welcome to ask questions uh, through the event or stage chat as well. And I'll be getting to those questions uh, as we go along here with John. So, so let's talk about uh, kind of the early days because your family is uh, very much into um, uh, cheeses and, and so on. So why, why don't you talk about your, your family name because it's been, uh, synonymous with cheese for, for many years, even before opening up Hero Certified Burgers. That's correct. And Mark, thank you very much for the invite today. Um, I'm excited here to be with uh, with yourself and the group. Um, so the Letiri name has been in food uh, pretty well uh, throughout our whole family. Um, <clears throat> my dad and uh, his brothers uh, and his brother-in-law and, uh, and another partner founded in 1961 uh, Trey Stella Cheese. And from there into the upbringing, it was all about um, educating, uh, innovating and educating and uh, creating new new products that was to the market. So you figure in 1961, there was maybe four or five pizzerias in Toronto. Uh, people did not know what mozzarella is. At one point, um, way back um, in the early days, is they were um, making cheese and disposing of the cheese just to have the way to make ricotta because back in those days there were italian immigrants that have uh, actually have uh, predominantly a sicilian or southern italian descent that used the ricotta for pastries and uh it was really an issue on um selling cheese people did not know what mozzarella was they did not know what lasagna was and my my, my you know i'm very fortunate to uh um have my uh my, my father and his siblings Kind of create that industry with a lot of the other early immigrants that actually manufactured cheese which at the end of the day in the dairy business they become your peers more than your competitors and uh, long live that i um i went to school in switzerland i got a um a dairy certificate at a polytech that specialized in dairy technology um, i moved to a small town when i got back uh, called listowell near listowell ontario if anybody knows listowell was famous for selling the most cars per capita in all of Canada. And we had a small cheese factory out near, uh, right near which was well called Atwood. And I developed a Swiss cheese and a feta cheese plant and worked in the family business. And subsequent to that, my dad retired and I got into the food service and hospitality. And that's where my independent journey begins. And your dad, uh, apparently the, the story goes is that he uh, really wanted high quality uh, uh, cheeses and uh, you never, never, uh, um, uh, never went for lower quality, always top quality. Well, he believed, in, he believed that when you, when you own that quality customer, he's yours forever. And uh, when you go out for a price customer, um, it's not necessarily uh, uh, that easy to maintain the customer's health. But outside of manufacturing, they were very strong in the importing world. They were the first to import, you know, gorgonzola cheese into Canada. You know, gorgonzola, he would bring in maybe five pieces a year that would sell once a year for the holiday season. He was the one that really developed the San Pellegrino um, water and uh, beverage wine here in Canada. Um, so they were, they were always into uh, uh, understanding where the market was going and fulfilled that. It's called maybe maybe a little bit premature at the, at the beginning, 
um, to really develop a market. And, uh, you know, now it's, uh, you know, blue cheese and gorgonzola and stracchino and provolone and all those cheeses really become a household name, you know, 50, 60 years later. Yeah. So you you, uh, you were in the cheese business and then you got into the retail business with Latero Espresso Bar Cafe, right? So how, what uh... So, uh, what happened there was we uh, when my dad sold his business, I uh, opened a, a small uh, Tipo Alto Grill, a sandwich juice, um, small entrees in 600 square feet in Hazelton Lanes. And um, at that point there, I went to the Coffee Fest in Seattle. And I saw, I saw this wonderful company that had maybe 200 stores called Starbucks. And it was really unbelievable on how people were standing in line in Seattle speaking Italian. So Grande, Macchiato, Coretto, Lungo. It was really, it was really uh, an impression. And I came back here, added an espresso machine, and we, we got into the, uh, into the espresso bar. Excellent. So you know, your first... Go ahead. Go on. Well, so your first, you mentioned, so your first uh, location, uh, which I guess was Hero Certified Burgers, right? In Yorkville, that was your first one? Or did you so call we it? Started both, we started both brands, Letieri and Hero Certified in Hazleton Lanes. I see. All right, great. And then, uh, so obviously, Rapidly has become uh, well known in the, in the Toronto area. Um, and there's certain... Uh, uh, messages that you want to send that like you, you talk, you talk about accountability. Um, so why don't you talk about that side of it? Because it's, you talk about the animals and you talk about, about the beef and, and so on. So, so. so what happened was, and we, we, you know, we family's done extensive traveling throughout Europe and it was always this natural and local and, and the beef came from this place and, and the pork came from this place. And there was always a origin of our meal. Every time we were outside of the big cities, we always kind of knew where our food came from. And this always resonated as, uh, as, um, as actually, you know, just really impressed. It, it, it left an impression on me, not necessarily because of the, of the fact that, uh, um, it, that, that everybody was talking about where their food was coming from. You know, if you go into, into the UK, you know, all the meats, uh, all um, hormone free, antibiotic free. So, I brought this to Canada um, 17, 18 years ago. It'll be our 18th anniversary, um, 93, 17th anniversary, um, November 8th. <clears throat> and um, I was looking for an all natural product. So the hamburger was such a great sandwich. And we were buying offshore home run free and antibiotic free. Um, and then we sponsored the Angus, Canadian Angus show at the at the Royal and I was, we met with the president of the Canadian Angus Association and I said, where's the, where's the rancher here in Canada? Now we're talking 17 years ago, you know, the, the, the beef was, you know, a really low commodity as far as price was concerned. Uh, the farmers were hard to get their yield and their animals at to a certain price. And uh, he introduced me to a rancher out in Grand Prairie who had really concerns for animal welfare. You know, our average rancher is 65 years old. Uh, how you ranch on the land really um, allows you to know where the growth of that farm or that ranch is going to be. So it's important to keep the welfare of the animal and the land and the integrity of the, of the rancher. So not being able to get top dollar, this rancher for his beef, and he was selling, you know, from hip to shoulder, the primary cuts into the Middle East and into the five-star hotels in Switzerland, which, you know, which, which, which was demanding a halal product. So that's how we got into the halal world that um, he was not able to get his ground beef price up. So we were kind of the, really the first in the industry as far as a retailer to tell the rancher, listen, we'll pay you a premium for your trim and your, and your, and your hamburger meat um, and we'll buy it and we're gonna create our, our, our chain around it. So it's been 17 years ago that we started this program and subsequent to that, um, his business grew and he ultimately sold it, but we were really the forefront as far as a retail from from you know, from pasture to plate to stay, that really was committed. To and uh, it's uh, it's uh, we take a lot of pride in that because in those beginning stages, it was hard to sell a ten dollar burger. You know, the the norm now is ten dollars and fifteen dollars, and that's the price. Um, and you know, the protein is expensive. But prior to that, you know, hamburger meat was cheap, and we were trying to translate that um, 
through our stores to the consumer that this is a different situation, not necessarily on the hormone antibody free, but what did it mean for animal welfare and for agriculture as a whole? So um, that's where it kind of all started. And, and it really kind of, you know, spun our way to where we are today. Hmm. So you really take an interest all the way through the whole process uh, and the ranchers are in Alberta, right? The ranches are in Alberta. They get, you know, there's a, there's some ranches out here that we, that we buy from, but primarily, uh, our, our, our ranching um, territory in Canada is Alberta. The, the, you know, the, the, the grass is great and the uh, land is mass, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah. And how did you go from, like, at what point did you decide to go from a first store in Yorkville to the second store and third store? Like, what was, was it? Did you already always have that in mind that you're going to expand to multiple stores? Well, the, the, the Thierry was a franchise model. And Hero was a, a business that was really up and coming. It was on the forefront as far as its offering. And I think to this day, due to our customization and the way we position ourselves, we're quite different than anybody else in the marketplace. Um, and that's important for everybody to kind of maintain their position. Um, so, so as the business was growing, there was a demand for people to license the brand and continue the growth. Fantastic. Um, so I'm, my name is Mark Belaish. I'm president of torontojobs.ca and torontoentrepreneurs.ca. I'm uh, joined by John Letieri uh, from Hero Certified Burgers. Thanks very much for your time, John, as well. Uh, we've got a, another 15 minutes or so left. So if uh, anyone has questions, feel free to post them in the either the event or the stage uh, chat, and I will moderate uh, from there as well. So, so some of your specialties, uh, you've got wild Alaskan salmon sandwiches, uh, poutine, Ontario greenhouse, uh, gr uh, Ontario grown greenhouse tomatoes. Uh, you have a lot of gluten free selections. Maybe talk a little bit about you know changes in uh, people's diets and you know kind of the opportunity that you see uh, from that perspective as well. Well, you know, I think that they're outside of the traceability and the origin of the product. Um, you know, people want to eat as much as a clean deck as possible. If we're talking calories. You know, then, uh, then um, you know, I, I would recommend you stay away from a burger and a fry, right? But uh, as far as you know, the origin and where the food is coming from, um, that we can accommodate for the gluten-free market, we can accommodate to the halal market, um, to the fried chicken market, and uh, you know, even to the plant-based. Uh, now we partner with uh, Light Life on our on our on our plant-based product, and uh, that's a growing space for us. Definitely a habit. It's habitual. It's a great product. I think the engineering, uh, you know, towards that plant-based food has gotten so, so sophisticated that the quality is a lot better than it was, you know, um, you know, years, years, years ago. Um, so it, it does shift. We should kind of want to get into the, uh, we don't want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of the, of the uh, changing of habits, but definitely gluten-free, definitely plant-based, um, definitely vegan. Um, so we've taken the egg wash out of our bun, um, which, you know, we all know that that egg wash gives fantastic uh, taste profile to a bun. But, you know, with that there and with that said, we, you know, we tend to want to, you know, veer ourselves into where people are, you know, the habits are going rather than, you know, just the niche. Hmm. Uh, so you obviously care about the quality. I mean, that's that seems like it's been in your family for a long time and you've carried that through. Uh, but you've also... Um, Hero Certified Burgers was also the first Canadian restaurant to use uh, a new type of packaging uh, produced post-industrial. There's, yeah. there's a plea pack made with 100% recyclable product. It's a, it's a, a product that was um, uh, designed by a Frenchman um, in France, and I, now it's made in, in America, but it's, uh, it's, whole, it's made from complete uh, biodegradable product. Um, and uh, it keeps the product warm, and it's quite unique. It's a little bit of a a pricey sometimes there's uh some complaints about it because it doesn't open up like a sheet and you can't put your fries and everything on there but uh, as far as now especially now with driving and takeout uh it really captures all the drip and you're safe to uh um you know um have a great sandwich without it dripping all over you mm. excellent oh, um so let's talk about um excellence and um your commitment as well because you you now have a number of franchisees um, you know, staff, um, talk, maybe talk a little bit about your commitment, um, how uh, you have an open book concept, uh, 
um, you know, share, you're sharing information as well through, through the channels? Um, well, especially in these times, you know, it's uh, their weekly calls with our franchisees. They're up to date on a weekly basis on what's going on. So there's a pulse on there. Um, now that everybody's um, learning that this type of a, of a medium <clears throat> platform to talk to people is the norm, the franchisees have gravitated, uh, you know, with our virtual kitchen, as you can see in the back, it's part of a program that we started pre COVID and um, <clears throat> it was really to be launched as a virtual in all sense of the word. And it's really kind of picked up for us now, Mark. Um, and basically this is a, a sustainable program for existing restaurants um, to add extra sales by selling, by making our product in their restaurant. So whenever there's an order in the area where the aggregates are, they become our distributor on the street. So store retail stores have now become almost like distribution hubs actually more than actually retail stores due to what's going on. So a lot of online uh, delivery, a lot of online pickup. And, um, you know, we, 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 we need to keep in touch with our, our operators on a weekly basis. We have an excellent operations manager here that speaks with them on a weekly basis on a variety of issues. So there's a continuum of conversation with them at, at all times. So maybe you can just uh, talk a little bit about the difference between that virtual kitchen, well, the difference or how they interrelate between the stores, the virtual kitchen and the espresso bars. So the virtual kitchen is, oh, so our bricks and mortars, so our, our, our real three, three ways of income are our bricks and mortars, our virtual kitchen. And last week we launched latierygrocery.com, um, which is a grocery um, online grocery delivery that we deliver from our warehouse product in our warehouse and we deliver out, we partner with some great fruit and vegetable people to offer the quality. <clears throat> so the brick and mortar is a conventional uh, retail store that operates like a franchise model. It's bricks and mortars. It's either walk in, sit down, average uh, square footage, 1200 square feet, you know, three and a half operators an hour for the whole day. And then our virtual kitchen is, and it would not be disturbed or it would not cross pollinate with an existing um, hero location. But we have quite a few in Ottawa. We just opened up Cornwall. Um, we opened up downtown on Bloor where we don't have stores. These restaurants are able to benefit from the delivery and the walk-in pickup by making our food for that area. So it's a really, it's, it's all about sustainability for the existing restaurant and everything is all digital. Uploading digitally, training is digital because they know how to cook. They're, they're already restaurant operators. We don't have to tell them to cook food. We just want them to show them how to cook our food. I see. Terrific. So in the past, you've had um, a relationship uh, being the official hamburger of the Leafs and the Raptors and the Marlies. Uh, maybe talk about that and how, you know, uh, for people who are watching, like just conceptually about partnerships and, you know, uh, how how that kind of thing comes around and and what it's meant to you and your your business. Well, I'll tell you, it was uh, an amazing experience uh, being partners with Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Uh, class act operation, uh, a lot of able people. They run a big, big business there um, in the normal in the normal days. And there are stats that show, um, really, if you have the dollars to do it, to be partners with a professional sports team brings a lot of merits to the brand. Um, it really kind of put us on the map on the everyday Leaf fan and Raptor fan or sports fan um, that was uh, either going to the center or watching on TV. Um, what they offer as far as that package that you can use to promote your business is really phenomenal. <clears throat> it's really, really phenomenal. So I'm a strong believer in that. It was uh, it was a, a probably not a great time of the, the, um, the history of uh, – MLS D to be partners where the teams were not really performing the way they were. Um, our term was a five-year term and I, there's just a lot of merits to it. If anybody really has the opportunity, uh, we were very fortunate to be selected as far as their burger partner. Um, but working with them, it was really uh, from top to bottom, it was really a class act and uh, it had a lot of benefit for our business. Excellent. And you've also given a lot back to the community as well. You've given food to food shelter or to shelters, uh, also uh, Bikers Against Distress, BAD, um, and Sick Kids, Hummer River Hospital. 
um, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, maybe talk a little bit about those initiatives as well and what that's meant to your business. Well, you know, this is there. These are all uh, tentacles of our community, um, either through what they output or actually through the organizers who happen to become friends. You know, um, Stan and Karen Latoski from the Bad Ride, uh, the money that they've raised for uh, the distress center is uh, is really something that you have to support. Um, and, um, you know, with all the initiatives with the Humber River Hospital, um, these are all participation through the community that we are interested in actually um, looking to uh, participate in. And you know what? It's it, it's all about it's all about giving back. And you know, this year we gave we gave uh, to our frontliners. We really don't want to push it. I didn't really want to use the frontliners as a marketing tool. I thought that this was really a you know a real serious situation, and uh, they put their lives at risk every every day um for keeping us uh, safe and healthy uh, but we gave we partnered with lint we gave out about six thousand boxes of chocolate we've given out burgers food lunch we've had them come to our restaurant and pick up and or deliver so it's really important that uh, they realize that uh, that we're there to stay committed to them as they're committed to us you know fantastic um we've got a few minutes left here again my name is mark Belash. i'm president of torontojobs.ca and torontoentrepreneurs.ca. I'm here with uh, John Lettieri, uh CEO of Hero Certified Burgers. And uh, thanks very much for taking the time, John, to share uh, your experiences. Um, maybe talk then about the future, expansion, uh, COVID. Um, we're like, it, it's so hard to know. Uh, companies are pivoting. Um, what, what's what's the future? What, you know, three months, six months, how, how far ahead do you plan as well with, with what's going on? You know, Mark, it's really an unknown. You know, the, you know, we have uh, three things that affected our business prior to COVID, and that was, uh, as far as the economics, is minimum wage and the evaluation of real estate. Toronto is an expensive city to play in, as far as real estate, and um, with COVID, it's kind of just taken everything up in the air. It's almost on a monthly basis, on you know, working with our landlords to keep the situation alive. I see the business growing more towards digital. Um, committed that, you know, I see our business in the next couple of years to be primarily digital. So these are things that we have in the iron, especially with our virtual kitchens um, that we're looking to bring across Canada. We're talking to people in the States as we speak right now who are interested in territories. Um, it's an easy, it's an easy scalable situation. And we're really looking to, uh, you know, to make that happen. So I believe it's going to be digital. I believe it's going to be direct to the home. I don't think it's going to change. Economics does um, find its way and its path to recovery. How that is in my world, I believe it's either digital delivering to home and continue with quality products and, you know, hopefully developing this, uh, not hopefully, but we are developing this virtual kitchen for the existing restaurants to participate, to help their sales. And especially in these times, we invite, you know, all restaurants to give it a look on what we're offering because it's, uh, it's helping out there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, heroburgers.com is the website. I know you're uh, trying to build on uh, social media following as well. So you can uh, connect, people can connect uh, from the website to your social media as well. Uh, I'm uh, in Mississauga. There's a great location that I uh, visit uh, at uh, Credit View and uh, Britannia. So, uh, you know, great, great food and uh, awesome uh, opportunity for uh, having a great uh, bite. Uh, so thanks very much, John. And uh, uh, for those of you watching, uh, I will be on shortly, actually, in the sessions area talking about the state of the Canadian labor market. And uh, I'll be heading over there, too. And you can also visit the networking area as well throughout the next uh, hour and 15 minutes or so. That's on the fuse at just above uh, our heads uh, up top here. So thanks again, John. Uh, great uh, sharing your story. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. And uh, it was a pleasure and Pleasure to meet you. Same here. Sounds great. And thanks. Uh, just hold on right there and uh, don't don't leave. And then uh, uh, we'll wrap things up. So thanks again to everybody for being here and uh, look forward to connecting with everybody through the sessions and the networking. Thanks. Thank you.